Competitor Splatoon has never been this good. The meta we're in and the insane amount of diversity is some of the highest in the entire series. So let's start with the best weapons and get through some of the harshest competition, ranking the best weapon in every class. As per usual, this is a tournament setting kind of thing. Play whatever weapon you like. It doesn't really matter how good it is competitively for you to enjoy it. If you want to help support the channel and see more ranking videos like this, be sure to subscribe and let's get started. For the shorter range shooters, the obvious candidates would be the NZAP 85 for the newer type of meta we've had with Cooler and Splash for a staple of crab meta that's still very strong. However, I would say that Splash is in one of the weakest spots it's ever been in. Don't get me wrong, it's still a top tier weapon, but there's a lot more options to deal with crab now than there ever were before. But I don't think Zap is the best bet either. There are four good Cooler weapons in the game right now. Tri Slosher, Zap 85, Snipe Rider, and Heavy Edit. And while all of them do their own unique things, Zap is far from doing its own dominant thing by any means. Again, another really strong weapon. However, I do think one weapon has recently passed them the splatter shot. This weapon was already pretty solid, but fairly recently got some buffs. It has better accuracy, but even more important, Trizuka is really good right now. In fact, it's arguably the best special in the game. The area of effect hitbox has recently been buffed from 40 to 60 damage, making it combo with itself for a two shot, as well as comboing with a ton of other things, such as other meta specials like Inkjet, for example. And while you may not have as many shots as Jetpack, Trizuka has more range, a giant radius and it's significantly faster and harder to react to. Because it happens so quickly and it's on a weapon so cheap as well, you can get a lot of Trizukas. Spotter shots 190p, that's pretty easy to farm them on. So not only do you have a solid, fast, flexible main weapon good for slaying and special output, paired with a solid bomb that's worked for it for three games, but you also have one of the strongest specials in the game, one of the main ways to get your team in, secure picks, or work with other weapons that can play off that 60 damage. This to me gives at the top spot. The long range shooters, on the other hand, don't really have as much competition. I mean, V-Jet's probably an honorable mention, there's stuff like 96 Deco, both of which have been seeing some solid use, but let's be honest, Squeezer is easily the better one. Its kit is one thing, Wall is fine, and for a mid-range weapon, it gives it some more favorable matchups than it would have normally, and ability to stand in some more annoying positions, and Trizuka I just talked about. However, in this case, the main weapon is what deserves some spotlight. This thing has just been waiting for its special to be good for the longest time. Remember, with a well-balanced sub and special in Splatoon 2, this thing was really good, and it couldn't even spam missiles, armor, or stingray at people like some of the other top tiers. The main is just that good at fighting people. Its pain isn't awful by any means, but I guess it's one of the weaknesses of the weapon class, but still, with the dedicated painting mode and not too bad ink efficiency on that mode, it's more than fine. When it comes to slaying, though, this thing's range is ridiculous. The kill time is only one frame slower than Splatoon Shot Pro with much more range. It stacks ridiculously well with mobility, meaning when you get tactical or your strafe speed, again, for that range value especially, is just insane. And on top of all of that, you got perfect accuracy too. Because why not? This has been one of the most stacked main weapons in the game. A special that used to be unreliable was really the only thing holding it back, and ever since it's gotten that buff, yeah, we've been seeing quite a lot of squeezers at top level play, especially in JP tournaments. Pretty easy candidate for the number one spot. Next up is the roller class, and wow, this has fallen off a little bit. I mean, rollers weren't in the best spot at the start of the game, but where some other classes like Brellas and Blasters have gone better, these have really only trended down. Luckily, there is still one roller in a pretty good spot, and that's the Carbon Roller Deco. This makes our third Trizuka weapon in a row to be the best of its class. Huh, I guess that's an odd coincidence. Anyway, Carbon with a Burst Bomb is pretty self-explanatory. I think by now, anyone who's played this game or Splatoon 1 enough knows just how devastating that combo is. And Trizuka is not only a great special, but something that works particularly well on a weapon with limited range like Carbon. This is a weapon that's been seen as one of the best in its class for the longest time now. Even when it had Auto Bomb Rush, it was arguably the best roller in Splatoon 2. So I don't think this is going to surprise anyone. Next up, for Chargers though, anyone out of the loop might be surprised by this one, because, well, this weapon was seen as pretty bad when it originally came out, but honestly, it's the best one now, the Snipe Rider. To briefly cover its strengths, the weapon solves a lot of the inconsistency problems Chargers have by having five separate shots, 
making it much more reliable to get some value. The weapon also paints and moves quite quickly, while having a very strong kit capable of getting many tacticaler options for its team. Cooler is really important for keeping up the aggression right now in this meta, as well as mitigating the value of more powerful specials like Trizuka, Inkjet, or Crab Tank. And Sniper Rider in particular gives you the ability to run more aggressive comps with it, since this is an anchor weapon with Cooler that can stay alive and give jumps to your team. It's not a perfect weapon by any means. I mean, look at its object damage, for example. That's always is gonna be bad, but that is definitely not enough to keep it from being the best charger, and the results are not even close when compared to the other ones. This thing sees way more use. Up next is the Slosher class, and there are two main candidates here. We have the Vanilla Slosher and Tri Nouveau. Slosher, since the start of the game, got a really sizable buff, making the minimum damage 50, giving it a consistent two shot. On top of that, it is one of the weapons that has been favored heavily by Tactical or entering the meta, especially given that it has Tri Strike, a special that you can't really use while fighting. Being able to save that special to be able to use it upon your respawn has given it a lot more practicality. Tri Nouveau, on the other hand, has become a solid support option for Tacticaler, as Fizzy Bombs allow its rather mediocre paint to actually be totally fine, as well as arguably be the best support bomb in the game right now. You can throw it far, it paints a lot, and the many explosions make it very useful for chip damage in team fights. Both of these see quite a lot of competitive play, but if I had to give one the edge, I would give it to the Vanilla Slosher. This weapon has seen a bit more use at higher level tournaments, such as the recent North American Championship, as well as holds more of its own unique niche. Tri Nouveau is a solid cooler weapon, but it's fighting with with three other cooler options and struggling to see use over them too frequently. While it's a solid option, it hasn't been proven to be one of the best, whereas Slosher, in terms of an AoE Slayer, is arguably the best option in the game in that role. While there's some competition for it that I'll get to later, it's held that top spot, and with solid tournament placings and a good kit, I think it's fair to rank it the best of the Sloshers. Now, talking about a class that has competition, man, Splatlings are even more up there. I mean, so many of these have been good. We've had both heavy Splatlings being good, two ball points and now heavy edit? This or shooters is probably the best overall class in Splatoon 3, and to narrow down the field we'd have to go with the two ball point spotlings and the brand new heavy edit. While the vanilla ball point has been a staple of its own meta, the nerfs to its special output, as well as inkjet itself, have hurt it in the long term. While it's still a good top tier option, jetpack is nowhere near as broken as it was before, on top of not getting very many of them. Ball point Nouveau, on the other hand, seeks to compete more with vanilla jet squatcher in terms of a vacuum niche. This special also got buffed recently, making it so that if you fill the vacuum, it gets a powerful shot that cannot be ignored, making it viable as a way to help get your team in. On top of that, with one of the specials being Tacticooler, a lot of the things that could fill vacuum special-wise are out of the picture, and in general, it's a bit more risky. Ballpoint may not have the long distance output of V-Jet, but it does have better close range combat and damage per second, so it's more than an arguable alternative. Finally, is the new kit on the block, the Heavy Edit Splatling. This is the game's first mid-range tacticaler option. Well, a good one anyway. Sorry, Dynamo. With similar range to the Nautilus, but a bit weaker fighting capabilities and a longer charge time, it's still proven to be very strong, as it has a high strafe speed and can get a decent amount of coolers, as well as has an insane amount of uptime and solid paint with a high fire rate. All three of these are contenders for the best of the class, but if I had to pick one for now, I would go with the vanilla ballpoint. Heavy Edit faces a lot of competition, and some longer range mid-range weapons like Squeezer and Sniper Rider are things it has to prove it can be able to deal with so far. And while Ballpoint Nouveau is good, it more directly competes with Vanilla Jet for its vacuum usage, even if it does end up being really good. Whereas Ballpoint is the best inkjet option in the game, it's also the one that's used the majority in tournaments. So I rank this one the highest. Wow, I had to ramble a bit, huh? Yep, in fact, so long that I'm gonna have to split the best weapons of every class into two parts. I mean, look at this runtime. This was already a decent amount of video. So yeah, we'll be covering Blasters Onward next week. We'll see you guys then.